museum and large institutions. Uh, and I'll let them introduce themselves in one, in one second. Uh, just wanna let all of you know, um, feel free. Uh, I have some questions lined up ready to ask them, but if you do have some specific questions, feel free to submit those in the chat. I'll be watching that. Uh, and once we kind of open it up to, to questions, uh, I'll start asking questions from, from there. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we'll kind of start small to large. Uh, so, so Moises, if you don't mind kicking it off and sharing a little bit about who you are, but also a little bit about uh, the institution that you're representing and that you um, are a member of. Yeah. Hi, so uh, I'm Moises Abelo Garcia. I am a freshman at Owen College of Engineering. Um, that's a engineering school, which is located about 20 minutes west of Boston. Um, it's extremely school, uh, extremely small. I'm about 390 students in total with 86 per graduating class. Um, we have about three main engineering concentrations. We have MECI, uh, electrical engineering, sustainability, and we also have like the opportunity to make your own. Um, I'm a mechanical engineering student uh, involved with tons of automotive things on campus. Uh, that's that's my passion. So yeah, if you, if you want to know more about small schools, that's all me. Great, thank you. Michaela? Hi, my name is Michaela Gray, and I am a junior electrical engineer at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Um, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, or RPI, uh, that name's too long, so I'm just going to shorten it. Um, so we're located in the Capital District of New York. Um, so we're about 15, 20 minutes from Albany, um, and we are a medium-sized school. And um, on campus, I'm involved in uh, the admissions ambassadors. So I do things like this. I do virtual tours uh, right now and panels. Um, I'm also involved in the Society of Women Engineers as an outreach coordinator. And I also am part of the Rensselaer Pep Band and I play the clarinet in that. Thank you, Michaela. Jade? Hi, um, I'm Jade Weber. I am a senior in biomedical engineering at Purdue University. So definitely a bigger school um, on campus. I'm also a minor in Spanish. Um, I'm from around St. Louis, um, just right over the border on the Illinois side. Um, on campus, I'm involved with the Purdue Student Engineering Foundation, which is similar to like what Michaela was talking about, like that engineering outreach into the community and things like that. Um, also involved in Purdue's chapter of Mortar Board, which is kind of the college equivalent of NHS. Um, I also did engineering projects and community service. If anybody is familiar with the EPICS program, I know a few schools around the country have that. Um, and then I also did study abroad and then after graduation, which is coming up really soon, um, I'll be going to grad school at Washington University in St. Louis. So, um, but just to introduce you to Purdue, if you're not aware, um, it is located in West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, which is about two hours south of Chicago and an hour north of Indianapolis. Um, it's about 41,000 people in total, about 33 or 34,000 undergrad. Um, it's an R1 research in institution. So most professors do do research on the side as well as uh, teach. And um, we have about 17 engineering majors, and I believe we're ranked eighth in the country for engineering, if I'm not wrong. I think we're tied. But. Awesome. Well, thank you to the three of you for being with us today and sharing a little bit about who you are and your institution that you're representing. Um, thinking back to your college search, um, which was a few years ago uh, for some of you, Moises a little bit more recently. Uh, Jade, you'll have to, to dust off the cobwebs for this one. Um, but thinking a little bit back to your college search, um, how did the size of institutions kind of play a factor um, in your decision making and, and kind of lead you to, to where, where you ended up? So we'll kind of, I guess, start on the other end now. So Jade, if you don't mind going first. Sure. Um, so my high school was about like my high school graduating class was about 650 people. Um, so not huge, but also not small. Um, but I knew that I personally wanted bigger. I didn't, I, I knew most of the people in my graduating class. And so I didn't really want that. That was just like a personal thing for me. I kind of wanted a bigger school where I didn't know everybody. Um, and I kind of wanted the like, I guess, bigger atmosphere. Um, and I do like interacting with people a lot. Like I, I do and really enjoy like these types of events, like outreach and meeting the people and things like that. And so for me, the solution to like finding that in a school was just having a bigger size. And so um, I also like am really into athletics. And so a big 10 school really helps with that. Um, 
And so size did play a large role in my college search. Um, I visited a few other smaller schools, like medium size. Um, and ultimately I did like the bigger atmosphere, the walking on campus and um, just being in the big 10 and things like that um, attracted me to a bigger school, so. Great, thank you. Uh, Michaela, if you don't mind going next, and we also just to add in, we had a quick question in the chat uh, regarding the size of RPI. So how many undergraduate and students? Yeah, I just realized I forgot to mention that. Um, so RPI has about 6,000 undergraduates and a little over a thousand uh, graduate students. Um, so we are, I guess, a little bit of a smaller medium-sized school. Um, and that is one of the things that drew me to RPI. I really enjoyed like knowing that it was a smaller school. Uh, our departments are a little smaller. So I feel like there's a lot more interaction I have with professors. Um, and uh, this regarding like size, also location was pretty important for me. Um, I didn't mention that I am about two hours away um, from RPI. So like that also helped. Um, but I really like that I can go walk like to my classes, which are all pretty close um, in our campus. And I can see like eight, like eight different people I know, and I can like say hi to them. Um, but there's also like, you know, I'm always meeting new people because we are um, still a, a decently large school. So I'm always getting to meet new people, but I also have a lot of friends like through groups I've made as well. Hey, thank you. Moises? Yeah. Um, so I went to the largest charter high school in the nation, and my graduating class was 1300. Um, and I absolutely hated uh, the fact that I graduated to, uh, towards the top of my class, and I didn't know the majority of the people in my graduating class. I pretty much only knew about 100 people who were in my program, um, which was pretty sad. Um, so when I was looking for schools, I really didn't want to be another number. Um, you know, I, I applied to larger schools like Michigan and, you know, that's a massive school. Uh, but when it really came down to making a choice of where I wanted to go, um, I chose Olin because um, I just, I felt that like having this small community would allow you to really uh, grow and be involved in a lot of things and get to know everyone and sure enough I mean I, I help around I help out with admissions I write for the school newspaper I uh, am part of two multicultural clubs I do um, research on campus and the list keeps on going on and I don't think I'd be able to do all those things at such a at a large university at least not as a freshman Great. Thank you to the three of you. I think that really helps kind of provide some great context and perspective on, on how there's really no right answer for, for this type of question. And it really does come down to a lot of kind of personal experiences that you guys mentioned a little bit in high school and how that was part of um, your search and the things that you were considering. So uh, really, really great to kind of hear, hear the three of you and back to back in, in terms of that. Um, talking a little bit about STEM um, and some of the hands-on experiences that I think are uh, really important, right? Those outside of the classroom types of experiences. Um, I'm curious a little bit of kind of uh, how those opportunities, what kinds of opportunities exist at your institutions? How do you get involved with them? Um, and so I uh, want to kick it off. We'll, we'll switch gears. We won't kind of start in the, we'll start in the middle with you, Michaela, this time. Um, and so if you don't mind sharing a little bit kind of about RPI's um, experiences that you have kind of outside of the classroom for uh, STEM education. Yeah, um, I also did mention before, RPI has about 11 different types of engineering as well. Um, which was also another draw for me. Um, but outside of the classroom, like I got very involved very quickly at RPI. Um, like I joined the Society of Women Engineers immediately. Um, I've held a couple like leadership positions in that organization. And I've really gotten a, a lot of good experience like holding leadership positions, but also I went to a, a local conference uh, in 2019 for them. I would have gone to the uh, national conference this year, but uh, we had it online because of COVID, um, but it was still a really great experience. So I've gotten to connect with a lot of employers through that. Um, and we also have a really tight like network through the Society of Women Engineers um, with companies. So we hold like meetings every month that we get to talk to these companies that come in. 
And also just the alumni network from RPI is really great as well. I talk to a lot of alum and they're always super involved. They just love like hearing from the students. And I've like gotten a few like opportunities through that. Um, just getting to speak with them and getting their experiences. Um, so I think RPI like sets you up well because I feel like there's a lot of time for them to focus on like uh, the individual students. Like if you need help, there's always help available um, and everyone's like super nice. Thank you. Uh, Moises, wanna head over to you? Yeah, um, outside of the classroom, Olin really doesn't um, like, like you're not missing out on anything that you would be missing out on like at a larger institution, at least from what I understand. Um, you have access to pretty much every uh, club you could ever think of because uh, whatever you can't find on campus, you're allowed to take at nearby universities uh, or colleges because Olin is part of a consortium at the mix of Babson and Wellesley. Babson's the top entrepreneur entrepreneurship school in the, in the world, I think. And Wellesley is one of the top liberal arts schools. You can join their clubs, their sports. Um, so, you know, I'm involved with um, lots of different clubs and we have project teams here at Olin. So it's like, if you like to work on stuff um, as a team, there's tons of those. That's what like our formula team and our Baja team are. Um, and likewise, um, there's tons of research opportunities. Almost every professor on campus does research. Um, and it's really easy to get a, a spot. You can literally just walk up to them and be like, hey, uh, you need another hand? And that's exactly what I did. I was just like, hey, can you need uh, someone to help you with mechanical engineering? And they're like, sure, come on. Um, and that's how uh, pretty much opportunities just happen here on campus. That's how I. That's how I got on this panel. They were just like, hey, do you wanna do you wanna present? I was like, of course I would. And that's just something that is part of the Olin community. A lot of people, pretty much everyone in the community, even alumni, they're very invested in the school. People love to talk about it. They love to kind of flex it. <laughs> um, and they love to stay committed to the school. Um, so it's it's a very incredible opportunity outside of the classroom. And Jade, want to round it out there? Sure. Um, that's actually really funny that you brought the just walking up to professors thing, because that's how I that's how I got my research as well on campus. I was just taking a class, and I liked the professor's research that he was talking about, and so I went up to him after class and you know talked to him about his research, and then he offered me a, st a spot in his lab, and I've been in that lab for three years now. So that's actually funny. Um, yeah. So at Purdue, um, like I mentioned a little bit before, I'm involved with. The Purdue Student Engineering Foundation um, at Purdue, there's there's like 400 student orgs you can join, um, like from Pet a Puppy Club to you know like a more professional organization like PSF, like I was talking about. Um, but we are one of two um, like kind of main student organizations for engineering on campus. There are obviously a lot of them, um, but they all kind of have different roles. But we're the kind of the two main ones, one of the two main ones, um, and we do that kind of the outreach uh, for the College of Engineering, while the other one they kind of like run the career fairs and for actual Purdue students. Um, so we kind of work together in that way. Um, I'm also involved with Mortar Board, um, which is the National College Senior Honor Society. And so there are 42 of us representing Purdue's chapter. Um, and so I'm outreach chairs for both of those organizations. Um, and so like Michaela was talking about, like leadership like positions, you know, are a great opportunity. Um, and it seems like it doesn't really matter what size school you go to, if you know, it, it it's a good opportunity and it's, and it seems, you know, um, pretty easy, I guess, um, no matter what side school you go to. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm also in, involved in research um, and I play a lot of intram intramural sand volleyball. Um, there's, you know, a ton of, you know, different activities like that, um, you know, from sports teams to, um, you know, more professional organizations. There's kind of really anything you want to do. And if there isn't, um, it is really easy. I think all you need is three people and an advisor to start a club. Um, so some of those, you know, 400 student organizations that I was talking about literally are probably four people. Um, but, you know, there's everybody's kind of, you know, niche club. And, um, you know, I, I found that like really quickly that getting involved on Purdue's campus was, you know, going to be something that I was really passionate about. Um, so I got involved pretty early. 
Um, but, you know, college, no matter what kind of size school you go to is kind of, you know, what you make out of it. And so, um, at least for, it seems like us three, like getting involved is like pretty important part, so. Great, thank you. And I think unlike the first question that were your answers very different, there was a lot of overlap in uh, all three of your answers in terms of getting involved and um, and being able to, to kind of jump right into a lot of those experiences. Um, I think the next thing I think that's important to talk about is a little bit about class size and kind of the classroom experience uh, that we talked a little bit about outside of the classroom. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of typical type of class sizes, um, kind of the experience in classes um, for each of you. Um, but before I, I turn it back over to the three of you, I do just want to remind everyone, um, I would love to open it up kind of after this question uh, to some questions that you might have for our three panelists. So feel free if you do have a question uh, regarding kind of their experiences at their, the different types of institutions, feel free to shoot that message message to either me um, or in the chat, uh, and we'll get to those afterwards. So um, we'll go ahead, why don't we start with you this time, Jade, uh, and if you don't mind sharing a little bit about kind of your classroom experiences at Purdue and what that's like at a larger school. Sure, um, okay, so Purdue is a little bit different than other like larger schools, I guess, at least in the engineering program. So my experience was obviously in, in the engineering college, um, and so we have what we call the first year engineering program. Um, and so a lot of schools do have it, um, but specifically at Purdue, you are not in your specific engineering major um, until your sophomore year. And so your, your freshman year is you're just first year engineering. Um, you're taking general classes, you know, you're being taught how to be an engineer um, before applying it to, you know, mechanical, biomedical, whatever you want. So, um, so class sizes were a little bit different kind of varying on year. And so first year, um, depending on what kind of, you know, engineering route that you took. Um, my class sizes were about, for my engineering classes were about, about 100. Um, and in almost every single class that I've taken at Purdue, um, I have had smaller group projects because that is how you make a bigger school small, or uh, that's how you ma make a bigger school feel smaller. Um, so a lot of group projects, because you're gonna have that in STEM no matter where you go. Um, but my bigger, you know, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3 classes, um, those were going to be bigger. And so my lectures were probably about 400 to 500 people. Um, but the way that Purdue kind of came over that kind of, because that is, you know, that's scary. That's 400 people in a class. You know, you don't really feel necessarily connected to the professor a lot of times. And so um, how they kind of overcame that is they made uh, a recitation. And so you have lecture three times a week on those bigger ones. And then you have a meeting time um, in a classroom of about 20 people once a week. And so you do still become connected to your professors or your TAs, um, even in a, in a class that probably has thousands of people taking it at one time. So um, those are kind of those bigger classes. And then once I became a biomedical engineer, uh, my sophomore year, the classes like definitely dwindled down now that I wasn't in those gen eds. Um, and so my class size in BME is about 120. And so we had one section um, until COVID hit and then we were split into two sections. Um, but being in kind of like the smaller classes, um, like 100, about 100, you know, 90 to 100 people, um, they they kind of allow you to, you know, still get to know everybody. It's it's bigger, but it's it's smaller than 400 people. And so we still have like a, a giant group me group chat um, with everybody of the class of 2021 um, biomedical engineering at Purdue. So you still get to know people and things like that. And then especially um, kind of as you, you know, become a senior, as you, kind of go towards graduation and you're taking, you know, 400, 500 level classes, those classes are definitely like 20 people. Um, and so you start to like, at least in my experience at Purdue, um, you start out, you know, with those general, you know, Chem 1, Calc 1, bigger classes. Um, they, they still do a good job of kind of making it feel like a smaller class with those recitations. Um, but the further you kind of go um, in your college experience, the smaller the, the classes get for sure. Thanks. Michaela, you want to go next? Yeah, this is going to sound a lot like what Jade said, um, because RPI is kind of similar, except for our, like, in our, we have five schools at RPI. We have engineering, humanities, business, architecture, and science. So the biggest school is engineering at RPI, but the largest major is computer science, um, which is kind of flip-flop because we're like an engineering school, but we have a great computer science program as well. Um, so a lot of our intro classes do have a lot of people, 
like chem one, physics one, computer science one. Um, but I don't think we have a lecture hall that holds more than 150 people at a time. So our biggest classes would be those at like 150. But um, we also do have recitations, which are about uh, 20 people for cal like calc math classes. Um, and I know for physics, they're even smaller. So they're like 10. Um, so you really get that like one-on-one -on -one time, especially like when you're just starting out, it's really nice. Um, RPI also has a ton of like programs to help you succeed. We have ALAC, which is like a student uh, help organization. So there's tutoring every single night. There's TAs and people available to help you, which is awesome. I utilize that a lot my freshman years because um, they have that for every intro class. Um, more specifically, I can talk about um, electrical engineering. So my department is the ECSE department. So it's electrical and computer systems engineering. Um, we're kind of just all smushed together just because the majors are pretty similar. Um, I think there's about 100 of us in my class, um, but specifically for electrical engineering, there's way less of us. There's probably 35 to 40 of us. Um, so I really feel like as I've gotten older, like I just finished my junior year, um, like a lot of my classes, if they're specifically electrical, they're like 30 kids. And our labs are even still split up even smaller. So there's maybe 15 of us in a lab. And I really feel like I'm getting that one on one time, like with professors and getting my questions answered. And I'm still getting to meet a ton of new people. I'm still meeting people in my major um, that I don't talk to all the time. So I really think that like class sizes at RPI, like they start a little bigger but they get smaller, but I think there's always resources to help you if you need it uh, at RPI. Great, thanks. Moises? Yeah, um, so Owen's, Owen's set up very differently. Um, I, I might blow some people's minds, but um, <laughs> basically at Owen, you start engineering from like day one, so you don't really have to take any explicit math or science courses. Instead, you have a combination of uh, math, science, engineering, and entrepreneurship in pretty much every class. So I think every class has to have at least three of those. Um, and sprinkled out, sprinkled throughout your course load, you have like a bio rec and a chem rec. Um, but it, it's so interesting because you have a six to one student to faculty ratio. So class sizes are almost always tiny. I'm currently in a class where there's a professor two course assistants, and then six students. Um, so, and that's like an intro to mechanical engineering class. So it's like, if you need help, like you can just send a text and you're there. Um, another thing that's interesting about Owen is that we have no tests, no midterms, no finals. Instead, everything is a project-based curriculum. So, um, you know, while your friends might be having midterms at one school, you'll be like grinding out a project at that same time. Um, and it's, it's nice because when you're graded, you're not really graded on, graded on like the same scale as a test. You're still, you're graded more on like the process you took to accomplish this project. Uh, you're, the way you work with your team, the way you can communicate what you did. Um, and uh, Olin finds that to be more important uh, to an engineer and I'm currently loving it. The stress levels are pretty low. That's why um, Owen is ranked, I think, 13th in like happiest students, um, even though we're also ranked like first in most studious. Um, so uh, it's, it's a pretty interesting mix. Uh, but yeah, in, it's been, like from day one, you're, you're working hard. And as, as you progress through the years, um, class sizes stay pretty small. I think that that largest class size is 25. Um, and the average class size is about 16. Um, and then once you get to your senior year, uh, you're basically not even really taking classes anymore. You're working on a project full time. Either doing like called affordable design and entrepreneurship, or you're doing scope, which is the senior capstone uh, in engineering. Um, and scope is like you're working with a uh, sponsor like Ford or SpaceX or Bose on a project with them. And ABE, you're working with communities that need your help to design um, stuff that they might need. Um, like they made like a cassava grinder for people in uh, a part of Ghana. Um, so yeah, the classes are insane. They're really cool and they're really small. 
Great, thank you. So we got a few more minutes left. Um, and so I kind of want to wrap up and ask kind of a two part question uh, and hope that you can be uh, honest with us and maybe it doesn't, the your answer doesn't necessarily reflect your experience or your institution, but thinking about kind of the size of your institution. Um, but for the group, I would love to hear kind of after kind of living through um, being on a campus of your size, uh, what would you say would be kind of uh, the, the the biggest pro and and on the flip side, the biggest con uh, regarding the size of the institution uh, that you are at. Uh, so again, that might not be some an experience that you've personally felt, uh, but kind of thinking about the size of your institution. So um, I, that one, you might have to think a little bit. So whoever wants to, to jump in and go first, um, go for it. Um. So I'll say, I think the biggest pro to being such a small campus is that through like the relationships you build with your graduating class are in, like incredibly tight um, because you are basically growing up with these people in terms of like engineering. Um, so they are like your brothers and sisters in engineering. And it's, 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 a, it's, so, um, it's so nice, especially because Olin has a, um, 50% or like it's a evenly split. You have like an equal gender split. So it's really nice. Um, I think the biggest con, which doesn't apply to me because I love everyone in my, in my class, uh, but like if you don't get along with someone, I guess uh, that could be pretty uh, detrimental to like that relationship and maybe to other relationships because it is so small. Yeah, I can go. So I think the biggest pro of like a medium sized school is it's almost like the best of both wor worlds. My my school is a bit on the smaller side um, in terms of medium, but I really like enjoy when I'm walking to class like my campus isn't huge either like all the academic buildings are right near each other so it's not a short or it's not a far walk, especially when it's like winter and freezing outside because RPI is on top of a hill. I will say that it gets really cold, um, but I like being able to like wave to people and see them and stop and talk to them. Like if I'm on my way to class, like it's really just encouraging for me to like be like, oh wow, like I know people here um, and just knowing that like I fit in and feel comfortable in this community. Um, my cons are pretty pretty similar um, to Moises. Uh, just if you don't really like someone in your major, ooh, especially mine, because there's only about 30, like actually electrical engineers. Um, that's a little rough. Um, and also I will mention the gender ratio at RPI. Uh, it's getting better, but it's about 30% female, 70% male. Um, my major is a little bit more skewed to a lot less women. Um, so I do think that just because my school is a little smaller, like I'm not finding as many, as many women like in my specific electrical engineering classes. Um, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal for me. Like I kind of knew that going into this major at the school. Um, so it was just something I was prepared for. And, but I really loved uh, being at RPI. Yeah, and I would say for bigger schools, um, the biggest pro would just be um, just kind of the general there, there are a lot of opportunities and that, that's not to say like smaller schools or medium high schools don't have any opportunities um but it's just something that i like was personally aware of like going to a bigger school and then um it is a like a big campus and that is something that i looked for um there's a lot of things going on at all times if you go from corner to corner it takes about 25 minutes to walk the whole campus so it is bigger um but that is something that i like about it there, it's always bustling there's people everywhere um and I also was kind of looking to meet all sorts of different types of people. And so there are people, you know, that coming to Purdue that, you know, and that you'll find that I think at most colleges, no matter what the size is, but just because it is college, but I really wanted to meet all different sorts of types of people. Um, it's something that I enjoy. And so I definitely get that at a bigger size school. Um, and then also, you know, the opportunities to get involved do make it feel smaller. And so even though I did want that bigger size, um, you know, having a 500 person lecture, it doesn't scare me or anything, or I do like that about it, but it does, you know, getting involved in, ha in finding your, your group and your, your niche area of campus does make it feel smaller and, um, 
kind of getting involved in that way. And I guess my con would be, I guess, class size. And so even though I'm personally okay with it and I, you know, I'm okay with, you know, the recitation making it feel smaller and I'm able to con connect with my professor still, um, that is a con to like many people when looking at a bigger school is that you will have those big, bigger lectures. Great. Well, Jade, Michaela, and Moises, thank you so much for, for sharing a little bit about your experiences at, at the three of your institutions. I uh, really uh, appreciate all of your, your honesty and with the group. I hope that everyone participating in today's panel also um, uh, are, are leaving uh, feeling a little bit better about your college search um, and the different types of institutions out there and some of those factors that you're considering uh, as you're working on building your list uh, of schools that you are will apply to. So thank you all on behalf of NACAC for participating in today's panel and today's college fair uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for hosting.